But the problem is the Bible wasn't written directly to you. Uh, listen to what I'm saying. The Bible is not written to you. The Bible is written for you. So I must understand what the original author intended and what the original hearers could have understood. And once I understand that, and you may say to me, how, how do you do that? Well, it's the history of their day, why they wrote, where they lived. It's the occasion for the writing. And I'm just, the I'm, reason I'm so happy about doing a, um, a survey of the New Testament is, I, I want to I say this so strongly. Every book of the Bible is one sustained message. And what's happened to the church is we feel comfortable going into different books, pulling out one verse, putting our spin on it, and saying, thus saith the Lord. We are using the Bible for our agenda and not paying the price to understand its agenda. Now, we do have an obligation to apply that truth to our day, and that's where the creativity of each of us and our own particular historical setting comes in. But um, I, this is one of the strongest statements I ever make. I hope I, I hope I, <laughs> I hope I don't offend anybody. You don't have the right to let one inspired text damage or depreciate another inspired text. You don't have the right to pick one text out of a chapter and say, thus saith the Lord, when you haven't even read the chapter, much less the surrounding chapters that have one central inspired message. So, Al, I've just become consumed with this. I think about it every day. I've spent my whole life trying to help others. And right up front, I want to say to all of you, thank you for being here. God bless you for, the, for wanting to know more. And I, I am not trying to pass on my theology, and I do not necessarily want us to agree. That is not the agenda. What I want to do is give you a methodology and information so that you can come to the Bible yourself Find out what the original author said, pray about it, study it, and then walk in the light you have. And I really think our differentness is not a problem. Our differentness in the way we come to the Bible, how we see it, how we use it, is really God's wonderful way of helping Christians reap all different kind of lost people. So um, maybe at this point, um, I think we're going to do two things tonight. We're going to try to explain how this course is going to work. And then I want to take a, a little time to try to deal with why do we do surveys? What, it, what is the theological and hermeneutical purpose of a survey? And to do that, I, I know that I have two different kinds of audiences. Uh, some of you, and I hope there are many of you out there, uh, some of you are new Christians, and some of you are Christians who just want more information about the Bible. God bless you. I am so glad you've come. Others of you are pastors. Some of you have had the chance to go to seminary. Some of you have not. Now, for you, there's a different approach to this survey. Uh, there is more things you have to do to make this useful. And uh, so I want to delineate that. And um, I'm looking forward to have that opportunity. Thank you. We, we do appreciate you taking the time to be with us tonight. And again, we want to welcome everybody. I know more people have joined as you started speaking. And um, what we're doing tonight, we're launching a six-week um, overview of the New Testament. And I know in the mind of many people, um, to say survey of the New Testament in six weeks is a contradiction of terms. It's, it's almost impossible to do that because the Bible is so vast, there's so much to cover. And yet what we wanna to try to do is to maximize our time together. And our goal is to be here for an hour, no longer than an hour. If we need to go a little further, that's perfectly fine for Q&A if needed. But um, the, the purpose that we wanna, what we're gonna do, and, and again, my assumption is that you guys being here tonight is because you received, not only you register for the class, but you received um, our email where we provided the Zoom link so you guys were able to, to connect. And with that being said, one of the things that we provided for you, uh, besides the link to, to log in into the conference tonight or to the, to the call tonight, was also a, um, 
a class syllabus, which is basically a schedule or the breakdown of what we're going to do. So what I, what I like for us to do is I wanted for all you to meet Dr. Bob personally, which he just gave you a little bit of his testimony and the overarching purpose of part of how we're going to filter and go through the New Testament together. But I would like for us to also go through the details on how we're going to do this and the suggested methodology that we're going to try to follow. And everything that I've, I'm fixing to show you, again, I've sent it to you via email, which is the syllabus. So you'll see the breakdown of the dates and the meeting times and things like that. And the other thing is the website, which is going to be probably the number one place for our, you know, um, source of information, source of uh, studying and dealing with some questions that we're going to navigate together. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen. And then I'm going to ask Dr. Bob to explain a little bit of, uh, especially when it comes to the website, in just a second. Uh, let me see. Sharing my screen with you guys uh, is going to allow me to show you. Not this. That's not <laughs> what I wanted to show. Let me find my dot. Oh, here it is. Okay. Here is the class syllabus that I sent um, to all of you guys earlier today. And we are doing this, um, this survey course. And, and by the way, when I say survey course, this is, this is something that is, um, uh, it is one course within a larger commitment or a larger invitation to make a commitment, which is a certificate, uh, certificate of biblical studies. And the idea behind is to find a way to package the basics, the fundamentals, the foundational tools, and I say foundational because there's more to explore, that Dr. Bob has provided, created and provided for the world. And many of you guys, that's exactly why you're here, because many of you are familiar with the writings and the teaching and the videos and the audio and the emails that we sent um, of the resources. So I guess what I need to do is to show you this first, which this is basically the handout that was produced to explain the certificate of ministry. Um, I'm not going to read this to you. I will send it to you also via email. It's a PDF file, so it will get to your email. But basically, this is the breakdown of the certificate of ministry. So when you look at the syllabus and what I sent you and what we're doing tonight for the next six weeks is one of the courses for the entire certificate of ministry. And I say one of the courses because basically the certificate of ministry is, is made of um, one seminar. And I said one seminar as in, as, in, as in course, not one session, but a course that is called uh, You Can Understand the Bible, which is basically on biblical interpretation, how to, how to study the Bible, which Dr. Buff gave a brief intro to that a while ago. And then from there, we move into two survey courses, which is the Old Testament and the New Testament. And then from there, we move into a specific books of the Bible. The idea is to cover uh, six books of the of the new testament and four books of the old testament uh, we don't have specific books to go after we'll talk about it when we get there if if anybody wants to join us into the journey of you know getting the certificate uh, of ministry for now we're going through the survey we're going through the overview and then we'll look at the at the following courses but what you see in front of you right now which is also what you got on your emails again is is the introduction to this class or to this course of the New Testament. And we're doing this in partnership with uh, Texas Baptist. And Texas Baptist is basically the Baptist General Convention of Texas, um, in, in Texas, in the United States. And I know some of you are from, from other countries. Um, and, and we're doing this in partnership because the Lord has opened doors that uh, organizations like Texas Baptist with a mission-minded, with a purpose to support churches and provide training in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a lot of, uh, uh, as you guys know, a lot of uh, un never seen before, kind of uh, uncharted waters that we're facing, from the theological training, from the biblical training, it has created the opportunity to utilize means such as the internet and Zoom and some other means that we can convey this, this, uh, these tools. Now, the beauty of the conversation tonight, and I'm about to take you there, and Dr. Bob is going to help me with this, all of this is online. And not only it's online, it's completely free. 
And that's the beauty of part of our conversation. So partnering with Texas Baptist, BGCT has opened the doors for us to go into multiple countries, provide multiple trainings. And right now for the Certificate of Ministry, we are, we are including you guys that have registered for this class, we are very close to the 300 students register. Now, this is our first and only English class that we're offering. The other ones have been offered in Spanish. So we're hoping to you know, grow into the English as well. So we're taking one step at a time on that. But anyway, so j just to give you that, because you see in front of you this whole Bible Lessons International slash Texas Baptist and, and the BGCT or Baptist General Commission of Texas, and we're doing this in partnership. So again, the, the, the purpose is to make a six-week commitment. That's the idea. And what we're asking is basically to give us minimum of four out of the six meetings in attendance for, for you to receive the credit or for you to move towards the certificate. Uh, we understand sometimes things happen and we're not able to meet. We totally understand that. Um, uh, we, the idea is to broadcast this on social media as well so people can have access to these things. Um, and, but, but for us, if we're going to go through the course, the social media, that, that's not going to cut it. We need to be present. We need to interact and be here in Zoom. And that's why exactly what we are requiring the registration because email is going to be probably one of the best ways to communicate with that. Um, uh, on the syllabus, I have provided also my email and my WhatsApp or my phone number, whatever you want to use on that. And we can also communicate via that, that way as well. Um, the other thing that we would like for you guys to do, and some of you are completely new into Zoom, and that's perfectly fine. That's not a problem. Uh, but if you notice here on this section on the syllabus, we're asking you, and I'm going to highlight it, we're asking you to type your name on the chat, which is right either, either is under at the bottom of your screen where you have your camera and where you can close your camera or mute your microphone. You also have this whole thing for chat. And if you were to click there on the right hand side of your screen, it's going to open a chat room. And you can, if you can type your name in there, that will help us to count your presence uh, present in, a, in, in our class. Right now, we have a small group. And, and again, this is typically how classes begin. But um, one of our classes right now, uh, we're hosting 160 people. So it's really hard to keep up with 160 people, you know, on a virtual venue. So the way that we go with this is, again, writing that, their names on the chat and then uh, moving into the discussion questions, which is the next thing. Um, if you notice on the discussion questions, we're asking you to answer um, three discussion questions of your choice. And we're going to go through those in just a second. And we're asking you, which I put in here, that they're found at the bottom of the intro of every book of the Bible, which has been put together. So you don't have to look for the books of the Bible. It's all in one single uh, section that we're going to show you in just a second. And the other one is that we're looking for you guys to give us at least two paragraphs, no more than four, uh, where you can give us an explanation, just letting us know that you and I, we are communicating and understanding some of these questions that we're going to look in just a second. And then the last thing is that we're asking if you can just mail them to, to myself. You can just send it to me and we will appreciate that a lot. So again, so the attendance is a combination of showing up, being present, and then the other one is the, the questions that we will, we would like for you guys to participate with that. Briefly, let me just go briefly over the calendar, which again is six weeks beginning tonight. And then it goes down all the way to basically the 24th of September. Um, we're looking for an hour meeting and you guys see the breakdown of the New Testament with some of the major blocks of how the, 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 the New Testament is typically divided. We're gonna get into those details in just a second. Um, and, and this implies that those are the sections that we're going to be talking or covering. Now, here is where the challenge begins. And it's like looking at next week, which is going to be August the 20th. We are scheduled to look at the Gospels. And when we say look at the Gospels in an hour, it's impossible. There's no way you can go through the Gospels, not even look at the major you know, pillars or background historical context of the Gospels. This is why. The way we're going to set up our time together, our one hour together, you know, on Thursdays, is simply to discuss what you guys have done throughout the week. And by what you have done, this is what it means. Now, before I, I'll show you the website, do you, does anybody have any questions? 
Do you guys mind opening your microphones? Do you have a question over this? Or should I just go ahead and continue? Come on, talk to me. You guys good? Everybody? Yes. All right, I'm going to move forward then. If you guys are good, let me just move forward. This is where the teaching come, and this is freebiblecommentary.org. This is the website of uh, Dr. Bob. We're looking at 45 years of putting this together. Is that correct? Yeah. Approximately? Yeah. So the work of several decades of the work of Dr. Bob putting this um, hermeneutical verse-by-verse -verse Bible commentaries. If, if for some of you this is completely new, first time to see this, that's perfectly fine. This is simple to navigate. You should not have major issues or problems getting around this. And what I want to show you just briefly, I want to show you the major windows uh, that you see in front of you. And although you're going to go just to one window for the actual interaction and, and, and the materials and the teaching, I still want to take the opportunity to simply to navigate this with you and show you briefly how Dr. Bob put this together and what you can find in this. Um, Dr. Bob, what, what would you consider to be the major parts that you would like to show tonight from the website? Well, I'd like to, to look at that uh, first red box first, because this is the Bible interpretation seminar that we're asking people to complete to get the certificate. And what this is, this is basically my understanding of authorial intent hermeneutics. And what we've done is several things at the bottom. You can see there's a video seminar. These are the five principles, principles, basic principles. The video seminar is 13, about 45 minute lessons done at a church in Dallas. And then there are six examples of how this makes a difference in how we present the truth. So these are ones we ask people to look at all of my exegetical studies on the whole Bible in Hebrew and in Greek flow from the principles in this hermeneutical seminar. So what I've done basically in it is give you my presuppositions about the Bible, uh, given you where I'm getting this approach, and it's from the church at Antioch of Syria is where this developed, uh, the church that sent out Paul and Barnabas, maybe the church from which Matthew was written from, because it is real possible that the four Gospels come from four geographic centers, not just the traditional authors. So it is, I'm not inventing this out of thin air. This is an ancient church method in reaction to the allegorical school at Alexandria, Egypt, that was influenced by Philo and then by Origen. So this is a different way of approaching the Bible because I think it's fair to ask anybody who claims to speak for God, can you show me in the Bible where you got that? And it needs to be not some mystical every word means something. It needs to be the plain meaning of words and the normal meaning of sentences. And we need to understand it in light of the author's day. So this is a seminar that we're going to be working through with some of you, I hope. And again, we're going to have a question and answer time to facilitate it along the way. But this probably is the basic foundation stone of looking at the commentaries. Okay, now let's go back to the second blue box, Vidal. I see, you know, the second blue box, yeah. Now, this is all the New Testament studies. And uh, what is in here is the entire New Testament. And we're going to ask you to... When the time comes to do books of the Bible, we're going to ask you to pick out several books of your choice, not ours, of your choice. We hope you'll think about doing one of the Gospels, one of the letters of Paul, one of the general epistles, you know, kind of spread it out in different genres and not just take all the Gospels. And so when you click on either written commentaries, which is what I'm going to look at tonight with you briefly, you'll see that it, they are they are about 10 to 12 pages per chapter. And I'll go over that information when, a little bit later when I show you exactly how to do this survey. Now, the second thing I want you to go down, go back to that blue box, Vidal. Okay, look down at the bottom on survey. Okay, click on that. Click on that blue box. You notice that it says New Testament survey right there. Now, this is what we're going to do for your course. If you look at this, what's going to happen on every book of the New Testament you see the seminars there right in the middle. But let's just take Matthew, what we're doing tonight. If you click on Matthew introduction, you're going to come to the introductory notes 
on the Gospel of Matthew. Now, this is going to in the same form for every book of the Old and New Testament. I'm going to do opening statements, authorship, genre, date, recipients, basic outline, main truths. Now, this is to give you the information that you need to understand this book as a whole. Now, I want to say again, please hear me. Every book of the Bible is one sustained, inspired message. And the only way to do that is to read the whole book. So if you're a new Christian or you're a Christian just wanting more information, I think you can just read my introduction, look at the video I'll show you and answer the questions. But if you're a pastor or you're a teacher, you need to commit yourself to reading the whole book. So for Matthew, you'd read the whole book of Matthew and you would say to yourself, what is the main purpose of this book? And then you try to see how does this author present that message? And if you're teaching or preaching, we need to do it through the whole book. So this gives you quickly, this is the same kind of thing a study Bible would do. This quickly gives you an overview of the book as a whole, because the part can't mean what the whole doesn't mean. And we're so guilty of taking little bitty pieces of the Bible and putting our spin or our denomination or our personal preferences or our family traditions in there. That's not right, brothers. We're going to have to answer to God for using his word instead of preaching his word. Now, if, if you'll notice on this, if, go back to the very beginning, you put in the doubts. Back, yeah, one more time, back. Now, you see where it says Matthew video? Every book of the New Testament we have videos of. Now, in the old, we have videos of most, but audios for some. So if you click on this video, this is the kind of thing we're going to ask you to look at. Now, the reason we're doing the first chapter, this kind of gives my overview of the whole book. So I'm quick. Now, I know I'm a lot younger. That's done 20 years ago. No comments. But this is a way for you to, to visualize what you just read through on the introduction. And what we're asking you to do is read the book of Matthew first. Read my introduction. Think through it. Watch the video. Now, go back one more time, get out. Now, do you see that next it says Matthew 1 exegetical outline? I've taken my outline. Now, this is on every book of the Bible, the same format. Now, if you have listened to me or heard me, you know that I am really committed to paragraph level interpretation through books because I think the smallest piece of literature that has a meaning is the paragraph. Now, the problem is there is no textual marker in Hebrew or Greek for paragraphs. So what I've done is compare translations from differing translation theories. Just real quick, you see the UBS text. This is the United Bible Society's Greek text. I think this is number three, probably, or, or number four. And I've shown you how they characterize this book. So they're going to have two major truths in chapter one, the genealogy of Jesus and the birth of Jesus. Now, notice New King James, some people who are committed to the Western family, the Textus Receptus. This is the New King James. It's the same manuscripts as King James. It's just with upgraded vocabulary. Look how they're going to show the paragraphing. Now, move over a little bit. This is New Revised Standard Version. This also is a word for word. And uh, you can see it's pretty much the same. Today's English version is coming out of the American Bible Society. It is a dynamic equivalent translation. So it's, it's sometimes going to do by, by people talking instead of subjects. This is the New Jerusalem Bible, which is a, a Catholic French translation, a very good translation. And I've done it because I want people to know this is not just an evangelical Baptist deal. I am open to Roman Catholic scholarship when I feel like it deals with the text. So as a teacher or preacher, I'm asking how many points in my sermon should be in Matthew 1? And if you look at this thing, pull back out a little bit, there are two major topics, all right? Now, how you divide that up and how you present it, that's up to you. But you shouldn't have a three-point sermon. You should have a two-point sermon. And sometimes y'all get five-point sermons. So we have been committed to structuring God's Word in light of our understanding and I want to get you back to understanding it 
in the outline the original inspired author gives us, not yours. So we have provided only the first chapter, though all the other chapters are there free. And we're going to ask you to read through this because this is the technical information. Now, quickly, let me say this. I try from six areas of information to back up what I say. Number one, the historical setting of the author. Number two, the literary units, the literary context. Number three, unique grammatical features. Number four, the lexical studies, what the word meant in that day. And then the kind of literature or genre, because there's different kinds and you must interpret them differently. And then parallel passages for the best interpreter of a divine book is a divine book. Now I want to pick up on genre just for a minute to talk about Matthew and really all the Gospels. These are not biographies. I don't know how much study you've done, but the, the Gospels do not present Jesus in exactly the same way, in exactly the same historical setting. There are differences between Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the synoptics from the Greek word soon, the preposition with, or, and then the word optic to see together. So there are three that have the same structure, and yet they present details different. Matthew always has two blind men, two angels. Uh, Luke and Mark always have one. What is the deal? Is there two or one? We can't answer that. This didn't, this didn't make the Bible inaccurate. Eyewitness accounts recorded things differently. Now, what we have to say is these are not histories. These are not cause and effect chronological histories. These are gospel presentations. As a matter of fact, they are presentations of the life of Jesus to target a certain group. I think Matthew, the most copied, the most used gospel, became a way to reach Jewish people because of its 50 Old Testament quotes and fulfillment, and it became the source of catechism for new believers for the Gentile church. This is a particular kind of ancient Near Eastern literature called testimony. Now, think with me for a minute, and I, I didn't come up with this. The one person who blessed me so much is Garden Fee in the book, How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth. And he made this statement that helped me so much get a hold of this. The writers under inspiration had the right to select from Jesus' teachings and words to summarize his sermons and to adapt them to a cert in a certain way to present who he is. Now, if you don't see that, then you've got the Gospels contradicting each other and the Bible having errors in it. No, no, no. This is not that kind of literature. And so, see, that is so helpful to me because so many lost people say, you can't trust the Bible. It's got errors. I don't think it has errors. I, I think it's historically accurate, but the Gospel is not Western history. So, we're trying to present every book to you, but brothers and sisters, you got to take the time to first pray. Don't pick up this book without praying. All of us are sinful. All of us are broken. All of us have bad interpretations. Every time we pick up this holy book with dirty hands, we need to pray for God to draw us near to him. We need to seek him. We need to pray for any, uh, any known unconfessed sin. We need to pray for the Holy Spirit to fill us and illumine us. And then we need to come and read the whole book and work through the book. I think paragraph by paragraph, but at least chapter by chapter. So we are saying you've got to do this at home. Now, in this survey, we're only asking you, if you're a new Christian or a new believer or just want some more information, we want you to read my introductory notes. We want you to watch the video. We want you to look at the, at the um, detailed exegetical outline and answer three discussion questions. Now, if you're a pastor, if you're a teacher, you've got more responsibility right now. You need to read the whole book first. People say, well, I don't have time. Then you don't have a time to preach in God's name either. If you don't take this call seriously and how important it is for you to present to your people the truth about the word of God, then you shouldn't be doing it. You need to read the whole book first. And then look at my introduction. You need to say to yourself, what is the main truth of this book and how does the author present it? And suddenly when you do that, you'll see how many sermons pick up on little bitty pieces of ambiguous information and make doctrines out of it. 
This book has one central message. Who is Jesus Christ and how do you know him? If we get caught off in other modern theological issues, we've missed the point of the original author. So if you're a pastor or teacher, you need to read the book first. You need to look at my introduction, then watch the video, and then go through the exegetical outline. The exegetical outline is going to deal with words and phrases. And I'm going to try on every one of those to bring what I can of those six areas of information for you to analyze. Brothers, I know I'm broken. I'm not trying to get you to agree with me, but I'm trying to force you to be able to document what you believe and why from the scripture. And this methodology will do that. So when someone asks you, why do you believe that? You won't say Spurgeon said, Wesley said, Augustine said, my mother said, all Baptists believe, holy moly. No, I want to know where it is in the Bible. So this is a chance for you to work through New Testament revelation, which is the fullness of God. Jesus is the ultimate revelation of the Father. So the New Testament supersedes the old as far as um, the fullness of information. Man, I got all caught up. Sorry, Bid Al. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I want to make sure that everybody, I want everybody to picture everything that you just said, which, by the way, has been recorded. So we provide these recordings to all of you guys. So you can go back and dissect it slowly and come back and, you know, reconnect the dots. Uh, but as you go and navigate, this is the section that I want to make sure that everybody understands. This is what we're responsible for. This is what we call the New Testament survey section of the website. So everything that Dr. Bob explained is, is the, con the context, context, the background, of where we want everyone to go and spend time throughout the week. The key factor for us, folks, is that we are doing this at our own pace. And I said own pace throughout the week. We're coming back a week from today. And what we're trying to do after we have spent the time doing the work, watching the videos, reading the, the commentaries, the introduction, the exegetical outlines, we're coming back and we're talking about the discussion questions that will be chosen by you. So, so what I'd like for us to do one more time, just, just, just to make sure that we understand, the website is called freebiblecommentary.org. I put that website in the in the syllabus and i will send it to you on a weekly basis every week i'm going to send you an email and you're going to see the website in there when you come to the website this is a new testament class so you're looking for this blue window because you only have two blue windows one is old one is new testament once you click in there then what you're going to see you're going to open up this a little bit so you can read it and again you get the written commentaries you get the audio commentaries, the video commentaries. It's the same thing, just on different format. The special topics, which I'm gonna ask Dr. Bob to speak in just a second, but then this is what you're looking for, right here, New Testament survey. You click on that, and then, now, let me say this, and I don't know if you guys actually click on it on the email that I sent, but in the, on the email that I sent today, you had the picture of the promo graphic for the class. If you were to click that, this is exactly what it takes you. So every week, I'm going to send you the link to this very same page right here in front of you. So you will be reminded this is what you're looking for. This is where the teaching comes. This is where the work is done. You need to do it on your own. We need for you to take the time. We're going to take the time throughout the week. And, and again, folks, we're not trying to overwhelm you. We're not trying to discourage anybody. We're doing this together. We're walking together on this. But here's the bottom line. If you guys remember what I said earlier, when it comes to the syllabus, um, for next week, which is the 20th, August the 20th, we're doing the Gospels. And when it comes to the Gospels, that's going to imply that we're going to ask you if you could help us to go through the book of Matthew, meaning all these three areas, through the book of Mark, also the book of Luke, and then ultimately through the book of John. That's what we would like for you guys to do. Come back next week and we can talk about some of these principles that you guys are learning. And again, we're, we're just asking for you to take maybe a day, day and a half to go on each book and dissect it, talk about it, email, WhatsApp, some of the venues that we can communicate if you guys were to have any 
questions. Dr. Bob, um, talk to us a little bit of those special topics because I know they're going to find them and they're going to see them as they read, you know, the introductions. Sure. And um, so talk, talk to us about those special topics, please. Well, very early in doing these uh, commentaries, it became obvious that some topics and some word studies are done over and over. So to keep these commentaries from being a thousand pages per book, I had to try to find a way to deal with these issues. So what that second uh, red box is, is these issues in alphabetical order. And I'd like to click on that. Uh, there's, I think there's 470 of them or something, but if you'll, if you'll go over to one or two of them, yeah, go to the side. Let's look at the, let's look at the abomination of desolation. Click on that. Now, this is a word that's used in three different ways in the Bible. It's used in Daniel for one person. It's used in the Gospels for another person. And it's used in the Revelation for another. It's the same word. So what you've got to do is kind of work through who, who is this and who does this stand for? Now, what I've tried to do, brothers and sisters, I have had the education, the opportunity for it. I have the resource books. Many of you love God as much as I do. You're as smart as I am, but you haven't had the opportunities. I'm trying to provide this information for you in a way that you can use. So you might disagree. Croak, I disagree with myself two weeks later. Get over it. This is meant to spur your thought. This is meant to be grease for the mill. This is not meant to be definitive. It's meant to be thought provoking. But People say, well, you said something I never heard. Well, that doesn't mean I'm wrong. It just means it, you need to think about it. And not just reading my stuff, but check the biblical references. The power is in the Bible, not in my presentation of the Bible, but I am trying to lay out for you the biblical passages where this subject is dealt with, the three different ways or three different people it's used for, and because what I hear is some people will say, well, the first time the Bible uses it, that sets the meaning for every usage. That is horrible hermeneutics. Context, context, context sets the meaning of words, not dictionaries, uh, not Bible encyclopedias, biblical context. Let's pick another one, Vidal. Uh, um, let's go to Revelation 21. The age and formation of the earth. This is coming out of Genesis, of course. What I've tried to do here, uh, I do not think that Genesis is meant to be understood literally, but literarily. Uh, there are word plays here. There are ancient Near Eastern thought forms. You cannot interpret Genesis 1 in light of modern Western science. You cannot. It was not meant to address that. So you have to look at it in light of its own day which is the other ancient Near Eastern cosmological accounts from Babylon, from Egypt. And so what I've tried to do is deal with a scientific issue like the age of the earth. That's what this is about. I, I'm trying to talk about thermoluminescence, carbon-14, stuff like that, uh, sedimentary rocks, uh, evolution. I'm not offended by evolution. I'm offended by naturalism that there is no God and it all happened just by chance. I, I am vehement against that. Now, how God did is not my, not my way, but I want to tell you, Genesis doesn't have one conservative understanding. So I've tried to give you the information you need to talk to friends and family. I think that this kind of study opens the door for us to dis discuss the Bible with educated, scientific people without being ashamed without being called uh, weak or somehow not thinking through it. So this is very technical. I, I try to document it when I can. I'll just go back one more time. And I, this is on the age of the earth. But if you go back on the next one, right below it, you see where it says, uh, um, let's see. Well, do that, this age and the age to come right here. The next one down, one more down. Yeah, one more, uh, this age and the age to come. Now, I, I, I know all of us wonder about the last days, are we in the last days, when is the second coming? What I've shown you is that there were two ages. There's one for the Old Testament from Genesis 3. The Jews believed it was a sinful age, but that God was going to break in with Messiah and set up a new age. That, that's their methodology of worldview. But because Jesus came twice, 
we realize that those two Jewish ages have been overlapped. So from the first coming of Jesus to the second coming is the latter days, the end time. Now that's what I'm documenting here of this development. And this is, this is Jesus did this, it's in Jewish, this overlapping of the two ages, the already and the not yet. And it puts a time frame on how the New Testament is to be understood. Well, um, I, I feel like that those special topics are helpful. So throughout the commentaries, instead of trying to reproduce this, every time this subject comes up, we have put an active link, at least in the English ones. And we're working on the, on the other ones too. But the English ones have a link. Now, if you don't want to take time to look at that, don't look at it. But maybe that is the issue you're concerned about in one of these written commentaries. And if it is, usually I don't happen in the introduction, be that it's going to be in the chapter one, exegetical one. Then we're going to have, um, look, see this right below here, a brief definition of Greek grammatical terms, textual criticism. Uh, you can understand the Bible seminar. Look down here. Uh, Yahweh's eternal redemptive plan. Um, these are all through here. If you have time to click on those, I think you'd be more informed. If you don't, or if you clicked on them earlier, just don't, don't do it again. But I spent a lot of my life doing these special topics. And I've got a lot of feedback from people, particularly pastors saying, you helped uh, lay it out for me in a, in a way I can understand in a documented uh, outline way. So that's what I'm trying to do. You'll see that I do a lot of outlining in my commentaries. I had a man in called me from, a, I think it was North Dakota, and said, we call you the outline man. Well, my mind thinks like that. So most of my commentaries have a lot of outlines, one, two, three. And again, I want to say to you what I have, because of who I am, what I'm trying to say, here is the options of how to understand this word from its lexical background. Here are the options on how to understand this phrase from a Greek grammar or Hebrew grammar background. Here is the options of how to understand the phrase from its usage in other cultures of the same period. So many times I'm gonna give you three or four options. I'm not sure which it is. You've gotta pray through it, think through it, and then that'll be something that you have to put which one you think best fits this context in. So uh, I, I really have provided everything. If you're hungry, I, I want to give you the information. One, uh, one quick question that I do have for you as we look at this um, sample of Matthew 1, Dr. Bob, remind okay. us the reason why you put in this rectangle specific verses such as 1-1, one, one, and then you group now verses 2 through 6a, and then 6b through 11 within the yes. chapter. This is, I'm, I'm using the um, New American Standard Bible of, uh, I believe it's 20 something, and this is their paragraphing division. So since I'm using the text of the New American Standard, I'm using the, the um, paragraphing of the New American Standard. Okay, I just want to make sure that. Yeah, it's a word for word translation, and um, I, I, I think it's a, a good one, and um, I've, I stutter some, so I never have been able to do King James. And um, when I was in seminary, they sent me a free copy of this in 1970, and I started preaching out of it, so it became the basis for my commentaries. So, so going back to the explanation that you gave on the special topics, I just want to pick this quick sample as well, because this is part of the assignment for us to read. And, and once again, Dr. Bob, we are required to read chapter one of every book. Right only right. so right. matthew obviously has more than one chapter but we're going to focus on chapter right. one introduction right. video in the first chapter right. so so as you guys read as we read through chapter one i want you to see that coming to verse three which you get the verse three here you get the, the bible here then he introduces due to what the verse is saying he requires women in the bible so when you click on this, which is a special topic, what it does, it takes you to the special topic section that we just went through that was alphabetically, you know, presented. Um, so anyway, so that you're going to see those links within the actual exegetical commentary. And I, that's why I wanted for Dr. Bob to explain those. So you know what they are. He's just expanding, going deeper versus including it. That, that's, you try to avoid for this to be longer, correct? 
Otherwise, right. it would be a very long document. Man, when I was a young preacher, I bought a set of Matthew Henry, I guess all of us do. My soul, the guy had 30 pages on three words. Who has enough time to read that? It was just too much. It was overwhelming. All of us need to have a schedule of study, but because we're pastors, and many of us are by, by uh, vocational, we don't have time for that. So what this is meant to be a quick set of references, tell you where I got it, document it from the Bible, and you can work through it when you have time. Dr. Bob, I, I want to just at a personal level, I guess, um, I, I want to show uh, how I personally use the commentaries yeah, good. on my Thank personal you. personal study. And I, I want you to picture and potentially if this is helpful to anybody, you don't have to do it like me uh, on the methodology, but I'm using the same resources that we're looking at. So if you can picture this, um, well, uh, let, let me choose chapter one, so make it easier. So eventually we gotta get to First Peter in our class. So I am preaching through First Peter right now on Sundays. I pastor a local church, and the role that I play as a preacher and communicator, I take something like this, and I put it in a PDF format, so Mac, my computer, allows me to take the file and translate it into PDF, which implies I'm able to highlight. And this is what I do. I highlight the things that I consider they're going to help me to keep the main thing, the main thing. And obviously, there is a lot of information here. So the challenge is to remain focused. And because on preaching, you have such a limited time. Uh, but I just want to show you, you know, some of the things that I personally do. And what I do from here, then I write my notes. And on my notes, that's exactly what I'm building now, the sermon. And eventually, it makes it into a PowerPoint. So it's kind of the process that I follow personally. Uh, but again, this is this is First Peter chapter 1. This is what I do for my personal Bible study and then for preaching. Again, you don't have to do that, but this is just something that I do when it comes to highlighting and, you know, utilizing um, uh, the resources and, and being able to, to, to translate them and put it into now, uh, in, a, in the case for someone like me who preaches the Bible, uh, I have to communicate this. I have to deliver the message. Now, we don't have the time tonight, and eventually we'll get to these conversations uh, over and over again. But when you go back to the homepage, and Dr. Bob introduced to you at the beginning the Biblical Interpretation Seminar, one of the things that he's going to introduce to the seminar, and by the way, by the seminar, we have the videos over there, and then we also have the lecture notebook. And on the notebook, um, this is where you can follow with the videos. We'll, we'll get to that eventually, but what I'm trying to say is that Dr. Bob introduces in this methodology on how to interpret the Bible, introduces four reading cycles. So the role that these tools, such as commentaries, play, they cannot be used at the beginning of the Bible study. So Dr. Bob, would you mind speaking a little bit of that into sure. where, where do the commentaries come in the process of biblical interpretation? Sure. Thank you so much for, let, for bringing that up. You know, the problem is that we tend to go to commentaries first. Now, to do that, then we get grabbed by the interpretation of the person we like. Then they drag us around by the nose of everything they believe, but we haven't been in the Bible. We've been in some human being. Thank God for them, but they are not authority. So the first thing is we got to read the whole book because it's one message. What is it about? What kind of literature is it? The second reading we say to ourselves, how is this truth presented? We're looking for the main literary units. Example, Romans 1, 1 through 17, the introduction. Romans 1, 18 through 331, all have sinned. Um, justification by grace through faith, chapter 4 through 8. So it, it starts out, why has Israel not believed, 9 through 11. These big literary units, that's how the author is presenting the message. Now, after the third reading, reading the whole book through, we start looking for specific things like history. Who wrote it? And show me where you got it. Who'd they write it to? Show me where you got it. What is the purpose of their writing? Show me where you got it. Now, after that, we check our outline, because you're supposed to outline the book when you can. We check that with commentaries or Bible dictionaries. And then after you have read through it and you think you understand it, then check the commentaries. Never check just one. And don't always look at the one that you agree with. Look at those you don't agree with and see if they can force you 
from the Bible itself to rethink through some of the things that maybe you haven't thought about. So it's an attempt to say, I hope you hear me, I'm, I'm screaming this, brothers, sisters, you, the Bible, and the Holy Spirit are priority. I can be a blessing to you at some point, but you, the Bible, and the Holy Spirit have priority. These are study guide commentaries. You have the responsibility under God to understand this for yourself, and then let me help you on some of the difficult passages, difficult words, uh, confusing subjects. That's where I can be a blessing. But if you read me first, then you're going to be preaching me, not, not the, the Bible. So comment, thank God for commentators, but you never, never, never go to them first. And you never just go to one, and you never just go to one that you agree with. Before, you before, my button on that. <laughs> <laughs> before, before we change the subject, because I know you have been focusing a lot on people like me who we do this as a vocation, as a calling, in the sense of preaching and teaching constantly. But tonight, and we're going to have a lot of people watching this video, that they are not calling to what we call vocational ministry in a sense of communicating this on a weekly basis or right. daily basis. But what about the responsibility of Christians and church members to well, remember, see? We have to be ready to give it. We have to ready to be able to give an account of the hope that's in us. All right. So I would say every Christian is a called, gifted, full-time minister of Jesus Christ. You may not preach or teach, but you still are called and gifted, and you need to be able to explain what you understand the Bible to say to another human being. So I thank God for the hunger that the Holy Spirit has put in you to understand the Bible better. I'm trying to give you a mechanism that you can use this method to find out what the original author intended, and you can use this message as a shield against what people say from the Bible that's not true. I hear so much crud in God's name that has nothing to do with the historical setting and the original author. It's a way to protect you as well as give you a track to run on. And again, we, I do not seek your agreement. I, I thank you for having a hunger for the Bible and wanting to know God. I, I, Psalms, I, I, my heart longs after him. That's what I hope, hope you have. But you can't follow humans. you got to follow the book. Amen. Amen. All right, folks. Um, we are coming to the end of our time. Today was an intro. Tonight was a time for us to look at the syllabus that we sent you. And I hope and everybody got it. Um, I send it to you via email. Sometimes our emails, they don't get to you because they go straight into spam or you know, those folders were those unwanted emails. So if you don't mind, check those folders if you don't get it from, from us. Um, but uh, I got a couple of questions for everybody. So is the syllabus, are the assignments okay with everybody? Are they clear? Was this helpful? Do we have any specific questions before we, we let Dr. Bob go tonight? Talk to me, somebody. Hi, Videl. How you doing? It's good to hear from you, brother. How are you? Very well, thank you. Um, just to be clear, just so uh, I'm clear and just maybe so others are clear as well, um, the requirements are, and maybe I'm just not um, as quick as everybody picking that up, but just so we're clear, the requirements are to read Chapter 1 of all four of the Gospels, and once we've done that, to answer three questions from each. Is, is that correct? And it's correct. Them back to you. And I, I'm, so, I'm so glad you brought that up because I was going to bring that up and I forgot. And now that you reminded me, let me just take you back and answer the question. The answer is yes, but let me, let me tell you what that yes means. So once again, New Testament studies. We go back into the New Testament survey, click on it. This is where everything is, as we said. So we come into this little section here, and the bottom one is the exegetical outline. So intro, yes. video, exegetical. You come here at the bottom of this page, and every single 
outline, exegetical outline for every book of the Bible, you're gonna find a section that is called discussion questions. Actually, Matthew only has three, so I don't, I don't think you get to choose. I think you gotta do the three that yeah, I show yeah, you here. Yeah. But this is what we're talking about. This section is at the bottom of every single uh, exegetical. And if you guys don't mind, come and give us, you know, answers over these questions here. That's, that's the assignment. And that's what we're asking. If you don't mind, send my way via email. Go ahead and type it. Send it my way. And then when we gather next week, we're going to talk about these questions. We're going to interact over the questions. Because, I'm going to say this again, the teaching, the lecture, comes out of the video. Here is your teaching. It's already recorded. And it's Dr. Bob teaching us the intro of the book, giving us some of the background, historical context, and things like that, which you're going to go back, and this is, this is the intro of the book. So we ask you to read the intro, we ask you to read the exegetical outline, and then watch the video, answer the questions. Yes, does that answer the question? Yes, yes. Um, some of the other gospels uh, have more than three questions, but um, that just means you got more to choose from, I guess. That's, that's right. correct, you get to choose. It's good. You get to choose, yes. We just wanna make sure, sure that- like people, sir. Go ahead, we Dr. would Bob. like people. Well, if you have a suggestion, you're kind of the first group that <laughs> you're walking on the water, if you would. If you have a suggestion for us, a way to make it easier, a way to make it uh, facilitate the information better, we are so open to that. Please uh, just hear me say we need your help, we need your prayers, and we need your input. So if it's a blessing or if you find a problem, please let us know. We're so open to modify this. One, one thing that we did not mention at the beginning, and Dr. Bob, I think this is worth mentioning once again, and sorry guys, but I got, I got, I got to mention this. There is a reason why, there is a reason why, let me come back to the beginning. Dr. Bob, 48 languages right here. Do you mind telling us about this 48 languages, the translations of your commentaries? Well, you know, years ago I was in Haiti and um, I was teaching at an OMS seminary and couldn't understand anything in church. And God just really spoke to my heart about uh, going home and uh, giving all my stuff away and giving it in the languages of the world. So we have tried through the years to, to find um, people who are pastors and teachers and church leaders. Um, these commentaries have cost over 200, I mean, over two and a half million dollars because the, these commentaries are about three to 5,000 a piece in every language. Now God's provided the money and we've provided this for you. We don't have every book in every language, but what, when I lead people to Christ, I tell them they need to start reading the Bible every day. And I suggest to them the Gospel of John, so you'll understand who Jesus is, the book of Romans, so you understand Christianity, and the book of 1 John, so you know how to live. So what we've done in these languages is do those three books first. And then we try to do other books in the New Testament and Old Testament. So um, I heard my brother say he is, speaks Farsi. I have been in Armenia for many years teaching uh, Iranian pastors that come across the border. And um, I, I just love those men so much. Uh, they can teach me so much. But I hope you realize and will pray for us. Can you imagine that right there at 3,000 to 5,000 per book? Do you realize how much this costs per language? Now we are providing this three free through the Holy Spirit. Please pray for us that God will provide what we need. And we hope you'll pass this on to others that you know that may be hungry for their heart language or for in-depth Bible study that doesn't come from a denominational perspective. And although, although when it comes to the commentaries, the written, which Dr. Buff has completed the Bible, audio and video, entire Bible, most of it, um, when it comes to these translations, and you guys come back to these languages, they're only in written form. Because that's all that has been translated into. But anyways, that, that's still a huge plus. And um, I just wanted to communicate that because... I know tonight we have people from multiple countries and continents, and we want to make sure that you guys take these resources and simply pass them along and invite anybody. Nathan, that I want to say hello. Let me Go say ahead. hello to Nathan. We've been contacting each other some and kind of missed in the night. Brother, God bless you. Sorry I've been so uh, 
busy and hadn't got back to you, but it's good to see you and thank you for tuning in. He's from Australia. Thank you, Bob. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. It's a real honor to be here. So, Nathan, what time is it, brother, in Australia? It is uh, 10.37 in the morning, Friday morning. Okay, wonderful. We got people that are in the middle of the night and, you know, from multiple countries. So, again, we do appreciate you guys so very much making the effort to connect. Dr. Bob, anything else that we need to communicate before we, we finish our time? No, I just want to realize this is a... This is a spiritual as well as academic process. And uh, we don't need you to know more so you can win Bible trivia with your in-laws. We need you to know more so you can be more like Christ. God mm -hmm. saves us to serve. He doesn't save us to go to heaven when we die. He saves us to serve now so others can go. We're all on this pilgrimage together. I may be a little older and down the road, but all of us are on this road. We want to lift up Jesus. We want to lift up the gospel. We want to lift up each other. We want the world to know that we know him. And um, thank you for your hunger to take this. Thank you for your time and interest. God bless you.